Uh, good morning, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's, my, it's my very great pleasure uh, to welcome you to the sixth IISS Fullerton Forum, the Shangri-La Dialogue Sherpa Meeting, and even more so to introduce to you as keynote speaker at this sixth IISS Fullerton Forum SLD Sherpa Meeting, the Republic of Korea's uh, Minister of Defense, Song Yung Mu. Minister Song has been Minister of National Defense since 14th of July last year after being nominated by newly elected President Moon Jae-in the previous month. He had been presidential candidate Moon's most senior advisor on defense issues during the 2017 election campaign. Minister Song had a distinguished career as a naval officer graduating from the ROK's Naval Academy in 1973. During the first battle of Yongpyong, a naval skirmish with North Korean forces in June 1999, he was commander of Battle Group 2 of the ROK Navy's Second Fleet. He was, soon afterwards, he became uh, commander of the First Fleet of the ROK Navy from 2000 to 2002. Subsequently, he was involved in establishing the ROK's Defense Reform Plan 2020, initiated in 2005 under the Ro Mu Hyun administration. This envisaged the thoroughgoing modernization of the ROK armed forces, ensuring a long-term defense budget and maintaining the ROK's alliance with the US, with the ROK assuming greater responsibility for wartime operational control of joint forces. From 2006 to 8, uh, Admiral Song, as he was then, was Chief of Naval Operations. Having advised Moon Jae-in during his 2012 presidential candid candidature, in 2013, Minister Song became Chair Professor at the Military and Police College, Konyang University. Minister Song assumed his present appointment last year at a particularly challenging time, given North Korea's escalating provocations and the acute danger that its nuclear weapons and missile programs pose to not just the ROK itself, but also other, other East Asian countries and, particularly, and potentially even the homeland of the ROK's ally, the United States. At the same time, Minister Song's appointment uh, reflected President Moon's resolve to fulfill one of his vitally important campaign pledges to continue the reforms uh, within the ROK armed forces. Indeed, in his inauguration speech, President Moon went so far as to speak of the aim of creating what he called brand new armed forces. Minister Song has also uh, played a central role in continuing discussions between the ROK and the US over the transfer of responsibility for operational control. As head of the ROK's defense establishment, as it faces these major internal and external challenges, Minister Song carries great responsibilities, so we're particularly grateful to him for making time to visit Singapore and to deliver this keynote address for the sixth IISS Fullerton Forum. Minister, I'd like to invite you to deliver your keynote address. Uh, the floor is yours, sir. First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude for being given the chance to speak at the world-renowned the Sixth Fullerton Forum. I'm honored to be here to discuss regional peace and stability with Dr. Tim Huxley, the Executive Director for IISS Asia, 
high-ranking defense officials from Asia-Pacific nations and security experts in their respective fields. I would like to start by delivering an assessment of security threats that the world faces currently, including North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. I will then explain the direction of my government's security policy. I will follow that up with recommendations for the Asia-Pacific Maritime Security Cooperation as a co-chair nation of the ADMM Plus Maritime Security, security WG. <laughs> Lastly, I would like to emphasize the importance of multilateral security cooperation in order to more effectively respond to traditional and transnational security threats. Historically speaking, the traditional threats such as conflicts surrounding ethnicities, religions, and territories were the main factors that created unstable security environments. Recently, unorthodox transnational threats such as terrorism, cyber attacks, and natural disasters have proliferated, further increasing the uncertainty in global security. As we have seen from the acts of terrorism in various parts of the world last year, the violent extremist indiscriminate terror attacks persist. Cyber attacks that threaten the entire world, such as the WannaCry ransomware, natural disasters such as Typhoon that struck the Philippines, and the refugee crisis in the Middle East and Africa are starting to emerge as serious threats. Among these orthodox and unorthodox security threats, the most serious and eminent problem is North Korea's nuclear and missile threats. Despite the repeated warnings and the UN's strong sanctions, North Korea continues to pour all of its resources into developing its nuclear missile capabilities. Through its New Year's address, North Korea has public publicly declared completion of its nuclear capabilities and that it will never give up its possession of nuclear weapons. Republic of Korea, under no circumstance, will accept North Korea as a nuclear power. On one hand, Korea will continue to strongly respond to North Korea's provocations. And on the other hand, utilize all possible measures, including sanctions and dialogue, to achieve complete, verifiable, and irre irreversible nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. A peaceful Korean Peninsula is not only the wish of the Korean people, but also of the people in the Asia-Pacific region and the world. My government will overcome the security threats on the Korean Peninsula and protect peace through the following efforts. First, my government will foster peace on the Korean Peninsula and prevent another war from occurring. It is the ultimate objective of our defense and diplomacy. Second, we will consistently progress the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula agreed upon. The denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula is both a means to attain peace and a goal, and in of itself. This is my government's immu immutable fundamental stance. Third, we will peacefully resolve the issues at hand peacefully through dialogues and negotiations. I would like to reiterate that the sanctions and pressures implemented to resolve North Korea's nuclear problem primary aim to bring North Korea to the dialogue, not to punish them. Fourth, we will firmly respond against North Korea's provocations. We will enhance defense and deterrence capability through far-reaching defense reform and further strengthen coordination with neighboring countries so respecting freedom and peace. Based on the above efforts, the Republic of Korea will create a peaceful, safe, and war-free environment we will go beyond keeping peace towards making peace. Distinguished guests from the home and aboard, as the co-chair of ADMM Plus Maritime Security EWG, 
I would like to emphasize the importance of proactive efforts and cooperation of the every country in the region for maritime security cooperation in the Asia Pacific. The borderless ocean requires cooperation. All nations must manage its value and work together to resolve problems. As you are all well aware, 90% of global trade occurs through maritime transportation, which shows that all countries in the world are closely connected through ocean. In specific, 40% of the world's population live in the Asia Pacific. The same region also makes up 52% of world GDP and 47% of world commerce. At the very center of the global economy, we must guarantee freedom of navigation in the region. However, without resolving causes of conflict such as maritime territorial disputes, crimes, acts of terrorism in ports, and pollution at sea, it is difficult to ensure freedom of navigation. Some of the more sensitive maritime territorial disputes in certain parts of the region are serving as excuses for projecting military power and armed races. At the same time, 50% of piracy worldwide occurs in South Asia, including the Malacca Straits. Cooperation among the countries in the region to ensure freedom of navigation is a pressing matter. The maritime pollution is an issue that affects all nations' equality. A recent analysis on the environmental impact of an oil tanker that sank in the East China Sea suggests that the oil leaked from the tanker could affect coastal countries that are 300 kilometers away from the source. All countries within the region must also cooperate and pay close attention to sharing maritime resources, such as taking measures to preserve the limited supply of fisheries. Moreover, the states within the region must proactively implement sanctions against North Korea pro to resolve North Korea's nuclear problem. Last September, the United, St United Nations Security Council adopted UNSC Resolution 2375 in response to the sixth nuclear test, which contains measures such as freezing the level of crude oil supply to the current level, limiting imports of refined petroleum products to 2 million barrels per year, restricting issuance of new visa for overseas North Korean laborers and providing right to inspect ships on international waters if the flag state complies. And in last November, acting in response to the new long-range ballistic missile launch, the UNSC adopted Resolution 2397, which includes measures that further reduce the import limit of refined petroleum products to 500,000 barrels annually, call for return of all North Korean laborers to their home country within 24 months, and also a seizure, inspection, and impounding of suspicious vessels. Furthermore, since the sixth nuclear test last year, some countries in Latin America, Middle East, and Europe are terminating missions of the North Korean ambassador or closing down the North Korean em embassy, exacerbating North Korea's diplomatic isolation. However, even as the international community continues sanctions, we suspect that North Korea has engaged in smuggling in oil and other materials in international waters by using ships under foreign flags or turning off its AIS. Thus, the countries in the region must thoroughly implement UNSC resolutions 2375 and 2397 and actively participate in surveillance operations against maritime smuggling. As you can see, maritime security cooperation, including issues of maritime economic activity and safety, requires transnational cooperation and long-term and consistent attention from the perspective of pursuing comprehensive security. Above all, in the field of defense, in order to facilitate maritime security cooperation and prevent unplanned clashes as a result of misunderstanding and mis misperception, we should promote international cooperation by revitalizing the maritime security consultative bodies such as the ARF, WPNs, and Qs, accompanying more active participation from the navies, from the countries within the region, 
for instance, distinguished guests, one country by itself cannot effectively meet the rapid increasing international threats, all countries must work together. In the Asia-Pacific, governments and civilians are working together through various channels, such as the Florton Forum, Shangri-La Dialogue, ADMM+, ARF, and EAS. The Korean government, in order to contribute to the multilateral security cooperation in the region, has hosted Seoul Defense Dialogue since 2012, which is a vice ministerial level security consultative body and actively participating in the efforts of ADM and Plus. Starting from 2014 to last March, Korea co chaired PKOEWG with Cambodia. We have worked to develop PKO based on the 20 years of experience in engaging in PKO. Moving forward, as a co-chair of Maritime Security EWG with Singapore, we will we'll to enhance response capabilities of the member states against maritime security threats in the region. President Moon Jae-in, during his visit to the ASEAN nations last November, has revealed his vision for the ROC ASEAN future community with focus on the three peak community, a central theme to his border New Southern policy. The, P the three P stands for a community centered around people, peace, and prosperity. A community of people that connects the individuals across nations. A community of peace that contributes to peace in Asia through security cooperation. And lastly, a community of prosperity that strives towards and enjoy economic growth through mutually beneficial economic cooperation. The Korean government pledges to closely cooperate with ASEAN to re realize the vision of three P community. We also pledged to regularize the Iraq ASEAN Vice Defense Ministerial Talks, which was held for the first time on the sidelines of Seoul Defense Dialogue last September. While it is true that the differences in institutions and cultures among the countries have led to cooperation below expectation, regardless, the efforts to enhance multilateral security cooperation must continue. In hope for a more vibrant multilateral security cooperation, I would like to highlight the following three points. First, all individual countries' sovereignty must be respected. On issues and fields that require regional security cooperation, all individual countries' opinions must be con considered equally. ASEAN has successfully led regional multilateral security cooperation based on this principle. Second, Rule-based international order must be adhered to. We must work to resolve conflicts within the frameworks based on international rules. Freedom of activities on the oceans must be guaranteed according to international norms and agreement. The countries engaged in disputes must respect the internationally recognized code of conduct. Third, we must improve transparency among the countries in the region based on mutual trust. Forming mutual trust is critical to preventing unexpected conflicts from miscalculation or misunderstanding. If the Asia-Pacific countries continue their efforts to improve multilateral security cooperation based on these three principles, we will surely overcome the security threats that we face today. Ultimately, I believe that we can create regional peace and stability that we all desire. Distinguished guests, 9th of February marks the beginning of 2018 Pyeongchang Winter Olympics and Paralympics, the most safe and peaceful Olympics game hosted in Korea to date. To this end, the two Koreas have restored the channel of communication North Korea has agreed to send its Olympic team, representatives, and performance group. We are coordinating the details at working level. Republic of Korea will use the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics as a turning point towards peace and stability on the Korean Peninsula. 
Furthermore, we hope that the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic spirit of peace continues to 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics and 2022 Beijing Winter Olympics, serving as the opportunity for peace and mutual prosperity in Northeast Asia. The 2018 International Fleet Review will be held in the Republic of Korea this coming fall. It will be a joyous festival where one can grasp firsthand the might of the navies from around the world and reach for the global peace and harmony. I would like to make prior invitation to the navies from all ADM and PLUS member countries to the fleet review. I sincerely wish all member states can attend the event to exchange and cooperate with one another. Furthermore, I would like to propose holding a forum for maritime peace and order in the Northeast, Northeast Asian waters with the navies of the Republic of Korea, the United States, Japan, China, and Russia. If we continue to develop this forum further, it will eventually expand not only to the entire East Asia, but also to Southeast and Southwest Asia. Once again, I would like to express my utmost gratitude to IISS for inviting me as the keynote speaker. I look forward to seeing you once more at the Shangri-La Dialogue in June. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Minister, uh, for your excellent uh, keynote address. I, I won't try to summarize uh, what you said because you, you spoke so eloquently and, and clearly uh, but I would like to highlight some some of your your key points in the areas that you you talked about you 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 talked about the great range of threats facing the world uh, but the preeminence at the moment uh, amongst those th threats of the challenge from North Korea you talked um, about the uh, uh, the need to go uh, beyond keeping peace to making peace. Uh, and uh, you went on to talk about the, the need for closer cooperation amongst Asia-Pacific countries on, on maritime security. And you drew, you drew a very strong link uh, between that need for greater maritime security cooperation and the North Korean challenge uh, by talking about the need for um, cooperation amongst uh, regional countries um, to prevent North Korean smuggling uh, and thereby to, su to, support, uh, to support the implementation of, of sanctions. Um, uh, you, you, you also uh, touched on the, the need for, for closer regional security cooperation in general through, uh, uh, through the ARF and ADMM Plus um, and forums such as the Seoul Defense Dialogue mm -hmm. and Shangri-La Dialogue. Um, and finally, um, you made an interesting uh, proposal uh, for uh, a regional forum for maritime security uh, and peace, uh, which might uh, emanate later this year from the International Fleet Review. So thank you for such a comprehensive um, yet concise uh, keynote address. Um, you very kindly agreed to take questions from our delegates and uh, I'd like to give our delegates the opportunity to pose questions to you now. Um, delegates, if you'd, if you'd like to um, raise a question uh, with the minister, could you please put your, your board up vertically and uh, I will identify you and then if you could say very quickly who you are, um, which country you're from, um, or, or mention if you're a non-government delegate, and then um, ask your question uh, very briefly. Uh, first of all, uh, Wen Guang Xiao. Uh, thank you, team. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister, for 
a very concise and uh, comprehensive uh, speech. Uh, I'm Wen Guangxiao from China. I do not represent uh, any uh, government capacity. I'm just uh, uh, a scholar from London. Uh, I've been associated with AWS for the past few years. Uh, my question, uh, picking up from what you refer to as the significant uh, decision by Pyongyang to send the uh, sportsmen to uh, Pyeongchang for the Winter Olympic uh, uh, to join their counterparts in uh, the ROK. Um, everybody recognized the important significance of that decision and also potential political ramifications for the peace and the security in the peninsula. Uh, my question to you, sir, is um, do you see Pyongyang's decision as a sign of strength or a sign of weakness? And then specifically, um, what's next? And thirdly, what China can do to help? Thank you. Thank you very much. Minister. Yeah. Uh, 여기 계신 모든 각국의 대표단 여러분, 저는 해군에서 40년간 근무했던 사람입니다. To all the representatives who are who are seated here with uh, with us today, uh, as you well know, I have worked in the Navy for 40 years. Uh, 저는 현역과 예비역 시절에 여러분들 나라에 거의 다 방문한 경험이 있는 사람입니다. In my active, year, active duty years, as well as during my uh, years after retirement, I have had the chance to visit almost all of your countries. Uh, because perhaps I've visited uh, China over 10 times, I expected such a question may, may come up today. Uh, 큰 정상적인 대화는 한 10년 만에 이루어졌다고 봅니다. Just looking at the inter-Korea dialogue that is taking place right now, I think that is the first one in 10 years to have for us to have a normal conversation at inter-Korea dialogue. 아, 지난번 정권에서 한번 있었지만은 그거는 평화를 만들 위한 대화는 아니었습니다. It is true that we did have an inter-Korea dialogue in the last administration in Korea. However, that, I believe, was not a true dialogue for, pe uh, for making peace. I believe the inter-Korea dialogue currently, that, uh, which is coordinating the uh, Pyeongchang Winter Olympic and North Korea's participation in it, is but a small stepping stone uh, towards peace. Uh, earlier, uh, you mentioned, uh, you asked whether this uh, decision by Pyongyang is a sign of strength or weakness. I think my answer is neither. Because historically speaking, the regimes in North Korea and Republic of Korea all share the same language and culture. As such, the, our opinions may differ, but we do see eye to eye on the fact that Eventually, we are partners that must go together. President Moon Jae-in's administration in ROK is concurrently pursuing new northern policy and new southern policy. Uh, by connecting 
we consider North Korea as a, as a little brother, as a small brother who we must embrace in our path towards peace and prosperity in Northeast Asia, as well as respecting the human rights in the region and through connecting, and we also see it as a, as, as a partner that must be connected to the CSR, the railroad that goes through Manchu area, as well as the TSR, the Trans-Siberian Railroad. So in this time, China has helped the North Korea to help the North Korea to the peace and peace and peace. I would like to implore you to uh, play, play an active role in persuading and compelling North Korea to come out to dialogue and to help it see sense. 우리는 평화를 원하지 강력한 힘에 의한 상호 경쟁과 어, 상호 비방의 시대는 끝나가야 된다고 생각합니다. We are looking to make peace. What we want is peace after all. And we are moving away from a period where we were competing with each other or we were trying to deride each other on the international stage. 이번, 어... 북한의 여러 사람들이 한국에 와서 볼때 한국의 발전상을 보고 다시 한번 느낄 것이 많다고 생각합니다. I believe the North Koreans who will be visiting Republic of Korea this year will have a lot to think about once they see how prosperous we are. 그래서 우리는 경쟁 시대는 끝나고 이제는 협조 시대로 전환되는 시기에 놓여 있다고 생각해서 중국이 많은 도움을 기대하는 바입니다. I believe, we believe we are at a crossroad, uh, from, uh, transitioning from a period of competition towards cooperation. And in this, we are, like, we are looking forward to China's active support and participation in this regard. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Um, I see a, a number of people who'd like to ask questions. So if I could ask those who'd like to ask questions to, to keep them very, very brief. Um, and, and to the point, um, because we only have uh, uh, a limited amount of, of time for this session. So, uh, uh, Dr. Sylvia Yazid. Thank you, uh, Dr. Huxley. Um, Minister Song, I come from Indonesia, which has been affected by um, intensified earthquakes recently. So you mentioned about natural disaster and refugee issues. Um, uh, at the beginning of your speech. We w I would like to know what's the position and uh, uh, direction of uh, Korea's policy on this matter. Um, could, could you elaborate more on that? Thank you. 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 Thank 어, 최근에 우리 한반도에도 경주와 포항 지역에 지진이 약한 지진이 있어서 피해가 좀 있었습니다. Even in Korea, we experienced earthquakes, uh, albeit a, a minor ones, in the area of Gyeongju and Pohang city, and we saw some casualties. 저 연설에는 필리핀의 그 작년도 태풍도 굉장히 컸었습니다. And I also mentioned the typhoons that struck Philippines as well in my speech. 그래서 우리 동아시아에서 한 나라에서 어, 일어나는 재해는 그 나라만의 책임으로서 복구해야 되는 것이 아니라 도울 수 있는 데까지는 전부 다 도와줘야 된다고 생각합니다. So I believe any country's natural disaster does not fall on that country's shoulders to fully recover uh, and it should not be one country's responsibility alone and it should be in fact a responsibility for all of us where we must help as much as we can. 어, 특히 의료 분야라든지 또 묻혀 있던 사람을 발굴하는 그 기술이라든지 또한 그 생존한 사람들의 구호라든지 생존을 위한 이런 지원은 적극적으로 정부와 정부 간에 도와주는 것이 동아시아의 평화를 만들어가는 지름길이라고 생각합니다. I believe in, especially in the field of uh, medical supports as well as human, re human remains recovery and any kind of supports to the survivors in order to ensure their survival. Uh, occurring at the government to government level sh is one of the paths that we must take towards peace. 그래서 인도네시아에서 저는 한세번 이상 방문했는데 그 자연재해에 대해서 인도네시아 정부가 굉장히 노력하는 것을 어, 찬양하는 바입니다. 
I have had the chance to visit Indonesia more than three times in my life, and I have seen every time I visited that I have seen Indonesian government is taking a, a lot of great efforts and approaches to uh, respond to the natural disasters. I recognize Indonesia's achievement in this regard. Thank you very much, Minister. Uh, Professor Benjamin Shreya. Um, thank you, um, Minister Professor Ben Shreya, from uh, an academic from Australia. Um, can I please invite you to um, share your assessments about the motivation for the DPRK's nuclear and weapons program with us? Um, is it, as some people say, just for deterrent purposes? Because if that is the case, then we might think about um, how to deter nu uh, nuclear North Korea. Or is it, as some um, others say, including in the US administration and elsewhere, that North Korea is building nuclear weapons for coercive and expansionist and even aggressive purposes, including reunification on the North's terms. If the second one is more accurate, then surely time is running out. Um, so very grateful for sharing with us your um, assessment of this. Thank you very much. Thanks. Very important question, Dr. Shriver. North Korea, I am sure, it realizes the obsolete nature of its military power and its uh, economic system general, in general. Uh, whether to the statement that North Korea is developing nuclear weapons to launch a strike against the United States, I believe all the global population will be very skeptical towards that statement. Should North Korea employ nuclear weapons against the United States or Republic of Korea, North Korea will be literally wiped off the face of the earth. And so such a situation, I believe, will never occur because what we're experiencing right now is just another part of Kim Jong-un and North Korea's propaganda strategy. I believe North Korea's statements and behavior so far are simply to uh, a message to Korea and United States that, that we should not intervene in North Korea's internal matters. And on the other hand, I believe North Korea is also using these uh, nuclear weapons as a means to consolidate power and uh, uh, further their domestic politics agenda. Uh, as we saw in the various examples around the world when, uh, as the Cold War ended in the last century, uh, we have gone far beyond a, a point in time where just because having nuclear, uh, just having nuclear weapons does not necessarily mean we can use it. So, 북한에 의한 통일을 위해서 핵을 사용한다는 것은 시대착오적인 발상입니다. And I believe that North Korea, that even to think that North Korea will ever use nuclear weapons to uh, try to unify the Korean Peninsula is an anachronistic statement. 아, 따라서 우리 문재인 정부의 신북방 정책은 인류를 위한, 평화를 만들기 위한 아주 적절한 시, 어, 정책이라 저는 the new northern policy that the President Moon Jae-in's administration is undertaking currently, I believe, is the humanitarian and peaceful approach. The path we have chosen is a long and arduous one, and it will require patience, patience, and nothing but patience, but that is the path we must take. 
대답이 잘 되었는지 모르겠습니다. I, I do hope that that answers your question, Doctor. Thank you, Minister. Um, Air Commodore John Mars. Minister, thank you very much indeed for the opportunity to address you here this morning. Um, I represent the European Union and I work in the security and defence field. Um, first of all, it was very uh, important for me to hear firsthand your assessment of the situation uh, in your region. Uh, and secondly, I'd like to thank you for the operational support you, Korea, are giving us in the European Union in our particular challenges that we have in the Horn of Africa through your framework partnership agreement with us in the counter piracy role. So it's very important for us to see that there is a close bond uh, between uh, Korea and the European Union. My question would be therefore, um, could I gauge your perspective on the importance you perceive of the European Union having a role in your region and also what more you would like to see us uh, doing to build on that relationship? Thank you. Uh, 영국의 그 EU 탈퇴에 대해서 제가 영국, 어, 영국, 어, 영국 EU에 탈퇴하는 문제에 대해서 이슈가 됐을 때 방문했었습니다. In 2016 December, I had a chance to visit Germany, Luxembourg, uh, Belgium, and UK, and had an overview of the history of formation of the uh, European Union. And I also had visited uh, these countries at a time when Brexit was becoming a problem. 그때 그 한국과 EU는 똑같은 길을 가고 있다고 믿을 수 있었습니다. And through, the, through that visit I was um, assert, I was certain that Korea and EU are walking the same path. 그래서 EU 국가들이 북한에 대해서 UN 제재에 대해 적극 동참해 준 것에 대해서 대단히 감사합니다. And I would also like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to EU, the European Union for uh, proactively participating in the uh, sanctions against North Korea. Mm. Uh, 관계뿐만 아니라 우리 한국과의 그 협조 관계는 수를 헤아릴 수 없이 많습니다. 앞으로 그런 관계를 계속 유지하기를 바랍니다. There are countless uh, starting from arranging from the diplomatic relations that we already enjoy to the various supports and success, uh, successful examples of where we coordinate uh, successfully such as uh, making sure that the ambassador the consular Tae Young Ho could reach the Republic of Korea safely, as well as restricting the use of North, foreign North Korean laborers in the European countries. I believe the success, uh, success and the depth of our relations go, uh, go far beyond what may, one may think. And I hope that this relationship continues in the future as well. Thank you, Minister. Uh, Dr. Ewan Graham. Thank you, Minister Song. I'm a non-official delegate based at the Lowy Institute in Sydney, Australia. Um, last September, it was reported that you had suggested um, reviewing the ROK's policy about the reintroduction of U.S. tactical nuclear weapons to the peninsula as a response to the threat posed by North Korea. Uh, I also understand that the ROK and the U.S. have recently convened uh, another round in their dialogue on extended nuclear deterrence. So I would be interested in, in how your position has evolved since September, whether you've received sufficient reassurance from the United States uh, that you would change your position on tactical nuclear weapons. And in the context that uh, in the political debate within South Korea, the acquisition of a nuclear capability has come back on the agenda in a way that I think has created some concern in the region can you offer us any reassurance that the ROK will not change its policy on the acquisition of a nuclear capability in future? Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Uh, first of all, thank you for your question. I think this touches upon a very sensitive yet very important issue. 애초에 전술할 때 얘기는 제가 매트스 장관하고 작년 8월 달, 8월 말에 만났을 때 에, 워싱턴 특파원의 한국 기자들이 잘못 이해해서 음, 보도가 시작된 것입니다. The, the whole issue regarding the tactical nukes on the Korean Peninsula started as a result of misunderstanding of the Korean journalists who have been deployed to Washington, D.C. And when they were covering the meeting between myself and Secretary Mattis at the end of the August, I think that is when misunderstanding started. Uh, 어떻게 된 사연이냐면은 매티스 장관하고 저하고 국방 장관 회담에서 한국의 보수 언론과 야당에서 전술에까지 재배치하기를 강요한다는 것이 보도되고 있습니다. 따라서 우리는 전술 핵을 어, 한반도에 배치하는 것이 아니라 그거에 상응할 정도의 강력한 한미 연합 전력을 배치해야 된다 하는 말을 했는데 전술핵 배치 검토한다고 오도된 것입니다. To give you some context, during the defense ministerial meeting between I, myself, and Secretary Mattis, I have mentioned to Secretary Mattis that currently the conservative party, uh, which is the opposition party in Korea, are, dem are going so far as to demand the redeployment of the U.S. tactical nuclear weapons. And as such, what my, what I, what my suggestion was that we, sh we shouldn't deploy, we should not deploy the U.S. tactical nuclear weapons but rather we should be deploying combined rock U.S. capabilities on the Korean Peninsula that has a corresponding might to a tactical nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. 한국은 1990년도 노태우 정권 때 한반도 비핵화 정책을 채택한 이래 한반도 그 정책을 바꾼 적은 없습니다. Since the uh, President Ro Tae-woo's uh, administration in the early 90s, when, when, when the administration chose a policy of non-proliferation, Republic of Korea has not changed the stance on this issue. 그래서 한국 국회에서 야당 의원들이 전술핵에 대해서 질문을 할때 북한 핵무기가 전술핵이 능력이 계속 증가됨에 따라서 모든 그걸 억제하기 위한 모든 대책에서 어, 전술핵 재배치도 검토할 필요성이 있다. 뭐 제가 대답한 적은 있습니다. However, I did answer uh, when I was asked questions on uh, deploying tactical nuclear weapons by the National Assembly members in the opposition party. I did answer that as North Korea's nuclear capabilities continue to be sophisticated, we must review all options. 그때 ICBM 발사하고 바로 그 다음 날 국회에서 한국이 북한 핵의 새로운 위협에 대해서 모든 방법을 다 대책을 강구해야 되겠다 하는 차원에서 얘기했습니다. To give you context on my answer then, this was a day after North Korea's ICBM test launch. And what I was saying is that we must be considering all avenues of approach in order to deal with this issue. 그래서 국방장관으로서 그 전날 ICBM 쏜데에 대해서는 고려하지 않을 대책은 하나도 없었습니다. As the Minister of National Defense, there was no way I could not consider what had happened the night before. 단 일주일이 지난 다음에 국회 전체 회의가 열렸습니다. A week later, we had the general uh, general session for the assembly. 음, 그때 제가 한 일주일 동안 검토한 결과, 우리 비핵화 정책은 계속돼야 된다. 해서 검토한 결과 우리 비핵화 정책은 계속 유지할 것이다. 고 대답을 해서 그 문제는 완벽하게 해결이 되었습니다. And at the general session, I, I had one week to review our government's policy stance on, uh, on deployment of tactical nukes and non-proliferation. And our uh, conclusive answer was that the non-proliferation policy must remain in place and that we will maintain that policy stance into the future. And that was the end of all the issues. 그 대신에 한미 연합 전력이라든지 한미일 그 정보력을 가지고 북한 핵에 대해서는 완벽하게 제압할 수 있도록 공조체제를 유지해 나가고 있습니다. 
However, we are maintaining from Rock US combined defense posture through our various ca combined capabilities and through intelligence capabilities. We are continuing our close collaboration on having a fast response time against North Korea to deter its nuclear weapons. 따라서 우리가 핵 보유에 대해서는 전 세계적으로 분명히 말씀드리지만 비핵화 정책을 계속 유지할 것이다 하는 것을 확인드리며 확장 억제 전략에 대해서는 계속 발전해 나갈 것이다 하고 답변을 드리겠습니다. So I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate once again that we will not look to possess nuclear weapons. Instead, we'll be pursuing to develop the extended deterrence capabilities. Thank you, Minister Song. One, one final question from uh, James Hackett, who is editor of the IISS Military Balance. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Minister. I guess that means I don't have to introduce myself. Um, my question is sort of related to the, the answer you gave to the previous question. Um, in recent years in the ISS in London, we've followed with interest the developments in South Korean defense policy, uh, such as kill chain, uh, Korean air and missile defense, and post-2015-16, I, I think the KMPR strategy that was developed. Now, in the wake of 2017's accelerating provocations from North Korea, I wonder if you could just give us a quick assessment of the most important next steps for South Korean defense reform and also for capability generation. Thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, thank you for a very important question. Uh, once we compare the, uh, military, the military balance in, in the, on the Korean Peninsula before Korean War, and if we compare that to today, I think the military balance on the Korean Peninsula is completely uh, broken. Uh, in recognition of this fact, North Korea is focusing more on nuclear weapons and the chemical, uh, excuse me, uh, weapons of mass destruction, chemical and biological weapons. 대신에 재래식 전력은 음, 거의 날가 있는 상태로 유지되고 있습니다. On the other hand, North Korea's conventional forces are maintained in what, what could be best described as antiquities. 그러나 한국의 경제력은 북한의 경제력의 45배가 넘는 경제를 갖고 있습니다. And if you consider the economic, economic size of the two Koreas, Republic of Korea outnumber North Korea's economic capability by 45 times. 그래서 북한이 핵을 남한에 사용한다는 가정은 우리가 세우지 않을 수가 없습니다. So when considering whether Republic of Korea, uh, when considering this, it is a distinct possibility that we must consider that North Korea may use nuclear weapons on Republic of Korea. 어, 그들이 만약에 에, 핵무기를 개발해서 남한에 사용한다면 북한은 핵무기보다 더 파괴력이 강한 재래식 무기로 보복을 당할 것입니다. If North Korea uses nuclear weapons uh, on Republic of Korea, then they will meet a response that is far more painful than nuclear weapons through conventional means. 우리 한국은 핵을 사용하지 않지만 북한의 여러 표적이라든지 여러 주요 군사적 목표에 대해서 완벽하게 제압을 할 것입니다. Although Korea does not possess nuclear weapons, however, we do have uh, various, we do have the intelligence and the capabilities necessary to neutralize a lot of targets and military objectives in North Korea. 아, 북한이 핵과 미사일을 사용할 때 우선 일차적으로 막는 것이 우리 KAMD입니다. So, in case of North Korea's attack on us using nuclear or missile weapons, the first line of defense against that would be our KAMD, Korea Air Missile and Defense. 두 번째, 그 한국의 탄도탄이 떨어지기 전에 우리는 한미연합 정보를 사용하여 
북한이 어, 발사 진지라든지 중요 표적을 완벽하게 무력화시킬 것입니다. 최단 시간 내에. And before the before the missile launched uh, falls on its target, Korea will utilize the ROC and U.S. combined intelligence assets to uh, to neutralize North Korea's uh, important targets of that that that, la that could launch missiles and nuclear weapons. 그것이 킬체인 작전으로 어, 계획을 하고 있습니다. And what I've just described to you is what we call kill chain. 이러한 우리가 대응 군사력을 갖고 있는 것은 북한을 공격하기 위한 것이 아니라 공격을 하지 않고 억제 전력을 확보하는 것입니다. And we have these capable, military capabilities to conduct strike against North Korea, but the, our purpose is not to attack North Korea, but rather be able to deter North Korea. 따라서 전쟁을 하기 위해서 억제력을 갖는 게 아니라 평화를 유지하기 위해서 억제력을 가져야 된다 하는 것이 저희 국방 계획이자 문재인 정부의 국방 정책입니다. The crux of my defense reform and the the key theme of President Moon Jae-in's administration's defense reform is that we are looking to attain deterrence not for the purpose of going to war but for keeping the peace. 다시 한번 분명히 말씀드리는데 전쟁을 억제하고 평화를 유지하기 위한 어, 우리 국방 정책이 국방 개혁으로 시연될 것입니다. And I would like to reiterate once again that uh, through our defense reform we will be able to, uh, we will be able to demonstrate to the world a defense policy that deters war and maintain peace. 마지막 말에 더 중점을 두시기 바랍니다. The, my last statement uh, should be the more important of the, all the statements that I have made. I hope that is, uh, I hope you can understand what I'm saying. Minister, thank you very much. Uh, I'm afraid we, we now need to bring uh, this session to a close, but uh, I'd like to thank you very much for setting so well the scene for the Sixth Fullerton Forum. Uh, in your, your really excellent keynote address, and, and also um, equally in your, your very careful and comprehensive answers to that range of uh, questions, I think you've, you've cast, uh, cast a lot of light on some very complex and difficult um, security questions, and, and particularly uh, on your own country's defense policy. And uh, we're very grateful to you uh, uh, for doing that. Uh, thank you again for your speech and uh, we look forward to seeing you here again yeah. uh, for the Shangri-La Dialogue in just over four months time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.